Hello everyone and welcome to the 2019 PCS Open Feature Card. Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, joined by Eagle McMahon and Eagle. Incredible event. We're about to break things down for everybody and we're in Norway. What are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at an incredible view first and foremost, but actual the actual hole, it is hole one. It's a par three, 410 feet, 125 meters. Uh, this is a, a great starting hole just because you're looking out over a fjord. Um, and what you don't see behind you or behind Jorgen, who's teeing off, there's a hot tub. Yeah, a sweet new feature that they added this year. Uh, so literally just a few feet behind where everyone's standing, there's a hot tub, some people participating, getting warmed up in the morning, some frigid temps and less than ideal conditions as you look pretty bundled up there. Yeah, uh, it was actually kind of funny. Um, the players meeting night before, uh, there was kind of a, a unanimous vote whether you play one or two rounds today. And um, everyone pretty much voted for the two rounds, even though the f forecast for the whole day was uh, rain. But I mean, living in Norway, you kind of have to you kind of have to play through harsh conditions like this. And we saw there Avery Jenkins with a little bit of a slip. Now, there is a Mando on that tree on that right side. He didn't miss it, but it's certainly a slip off the tee. Thanks to those conditions. And here is Norway's own Lucas Sandvik uh, as she's joining in here on the feature card. Yeah, actually, um, she and um, one of her best friends, Tommy, are the people I was uh, traveling with when I was in Norway. Thank you. And um, we Thank you. we did uh, six, six clinics throughout the lower part of the country. Um, very good people. And I was happy I got to spend some time with them. Well, and we see her as one of Norway's top competitors getting the yellow flag there. Now, very interesting approach. They have yellow and black flags, and the black flag features a skull just to be dramatic when uh, you go out of bounds. <laughs> and the yellow is a smiley face, so that's <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Seems pretty fitting. So you're with a pretty easy layup there, not really taking any risk here on this first hole. Mm-hmm. Look at hits left side chains doesn't catch unfortunately and just what a majestic view and I, I feel like we're going to sound like broken records by the end of the coverage but you just cannot complain about how beautiful it looks out here as Avery's trying to get up and down and after a less than stellar tee shot still finds himself with a par yeah exactly it's it's truly breathtaking even with uh not so ideal conditions, you still can't help but wow yourself every second by looking out over the ocean, seeing the mountains. And uh, Jor Jor Jorgen's flexing his end of a sock. <laughs> yeah, you're on. He's, uh, he certainly uh, is a uh, animated character out there on the course and uh, just the biggest supporter here of the tournament. In fact, PCS, a company that he runs that is our title sponsor here. So we're moving over to hole two. Hole two, it's par three, 341 feet, 104 meters. Uh, it's one of the more straightforward holes on the course. Pretty much all it is is a straight to a little bit of a hyzer, assuming you're throwing a right-handed backhand. Uh, but there is some uh, some hazard to worry about, like Jorgen Jorgen did here. He turned it over, and he's going to find himself out of bounds. You see the white sticks there? That's the, the line that um, that marks where you don't want to go. Right here, I am throwing a Glow FD3. If I recall, there was a bit of a headwind here, so all I was trying to do was keep it on a good edge. And landing a little bit left of this basket's really no problem because... You're putting slightly downhill, and you're going to find yourself uh, most likely in the circle. Oh, you're stable. Avery talking about the stability there, as I think he's going with a, a fairway. Now, one thing that you'll see throughout the round is just that intermittent idea of rain, no rain, you know, jacket, no jacket. It seems like the, the weather just can't really decide what it wants to do, although it, it's the, the wetness looms at all times. Yeah, being right on the coast here, the it makes the the weather very inconsistent. And a cool little fact: um, 
this is kind of like the leftover storm from uh, Hurricane Dorian that happened uh, a week before this event. And it was reaching us Bye here tonight, all the way up in Norway. Funny how that storm, you know, chased the disc golf scene all out and around. I was in Nantucket. It went up to the PEI in Canada and then up and over the coast and then ultimately finding itself over there in Scandinavia. Uh, just like we couldn't get away from mm -hmm. <laughs> that hurricane. It, it was tracking you down, Terry. <laughs> You're looking to try and get on the board here. We hear the waterfalls. Yeah, very nice little uh, green he has, they have here. A little pond, little uh, ditch that um, there is water in there. And I think sometimes they do play that out of bounds. But for this event, it, they, they were nice enough to just have it as casual. Luke slam it in there with her uh, exo hard link. And Luca, a Disc Mania sponsored player, is that correct? That is correct. And then team captain Avery Jenkins, man, this is this feels like some kind of, uh, I don't know, is this a, a review or analysis <laughs> or uh, <laughs> interview process here? I don't know. Trying to keep yourselves on the team with Avery, team captain running around out there. Hole number three. Hole three. It's 291 feet, 89 meters. Downhill, and the preferred play here is something that's going to spike into the hill so since it's sloping from right to left the ideal shot in my personal opinion is a forehand just because you can get it high and it's just gonna fall into the ground and with all this wet weather the ground is pretty soft so you don't really have to worry too much about rollaways yeah, i'm just throwing could... an overstable uh mid-range up there and I mean, that's just inside the circle. Have a putt at birdie. Yeah, I like the forehand play, as you're saying here. I feel like you, you have more room for air. Uh, you know, if you're playing with the hyzer and you're off on your angle a little bit, it could easily skip down the hillside, carry a long way past the basket. At least if you're throwing that forehand, I feel like it's not going to go anywhere, even if you're off your mark. And Luke had a good release on this, but just a little bit too much. And she finds herself out of bounds. Now you hear the rain picking back up. Again, just a few moments ago on hole two, there wasn't any rain to speak of. No one had their umbrella out, but that's all changed in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Jorgen looks to have released that with just a little bit too much Anheuser. The very least he'll be safe. I want to point out Luke is a very good um, forehand approach player and she she uses the disc mania p3 which isn't the most popular disc in our in our lineup but uh, she makes it look really good and I mean you should try it if you could throw it like Luke I'm sure you'd be saving uh, some strokes out there. Wow, and a little tester putt, almost, you know, the downhill, I won't call it quite a death putt, but if that misses, you know, he's going to be left with a, a sizable comeback. So great putt for Jenkins. That's going to get him on the board and get his first birdie. You're looking to go two for two on the last two holes here. Just inside the circle. Downhill. So this is all about just kind of gauging how high you need to throw it, how soft you need to throw it, and... I, feel like I, I was actually pretty happy with that putt because um, just after the the rain was just kind of calming down now, so uh, things are wet. You're kind of unsure on what your release is like for the day, so to get that to go in was really nice. And Yaron's putt not able to connect, so it looks like a little bit of struggle here on this third hole. Now, we're seeing some of the hole numbers on the baskets, and that is, just to clarify out there, there is a course here that's played, but there are a lot of different configurations. So uh, hopefully <laughs> neither you or I get too confused throughout the uh, commentary there, Eagle. But uh, the baskets can be in different positions based on how they're playing it for a less, uh, we'll say a lesser tournament or, you know, a different layout or configuration. Yeah, later in the course, there's actually some holes that are only 
um, in at a certain part of the year because uh, I believe it's on kind of farmland. So moving on to hole four, it's par three, 324 feet, 99 meters. One of the more technical style holes on the course down the whole right side, you have out of bounds and then it takes a, uh, a sharp right turn and it becomes safe. But the gap here isn't too big, but it's definitely fair. Yeah, it feels like it's a really straightforward shot, uh, literally. You just have to throw it straight, but sometimes the, those mandos can loom a little bit. You see the on the right side, you see the arrow for the mando, and then anything that gets up and gets a little wily on you could find itself in the OB creek on that right side. So although it shouldn't come to play, it's still in the back of your head. Oh, for sure. For me, on this hole, I'm just thinking about not pulling it right. As long <laughs> as I can... Um keep a good hyzer angle on the disc most of the way, then I'll I'll feel confident about leaving myself a putt. And Uranz is just a bit high, but he it's seems to clear it. And <laughs> he's almost pin high. That's that's a very good play. Just giving it some room to a hyzer left and just biting off distance down the fairway. Oh, that's a really unfortunate kick there, but I believe she's safe. Yeah, that's insult to injury almost, though, with knocking herself down there and then giving herself the obstructed lie as if hitting the tree wasn't unfortunate enough. Uh, she's going to have a little more work to do as Avery puts himself right next to the pin. And from this distance, I mean, you're just trying to get up and down and walk away with a par, aren't you? Yes, definitely. Uh, I put myself a little, <laughs> a little too far past it for uh, for comfort. But to to make a make a note, this is actually pretty early in the morning. I think we're starting around nine, and I don't I don't like making excuses, but I'm used to tea times. So waking up and playing early is a little different. Yeah, and and I'll I'll echo what you said a moment ago with the impending weather that was talked about as you're lining up your par putt here. The the format for this tournament is eighteen on Friday morning. 18 Friday afternoon, 18 Saturday mid-morning, and then a final seven holes. So that's a lot of golf to be played within these two days. And then, like we said, with the weather on top of it, uh, there's some legitimate challenges out there. But we all know it's because they're really just making time for the party that Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is epic. Absolutely. If you, if you either go back early in the video or remember... Uh, kind of the, the terrace up above hole one, it says Ragnarok. And in either Norwegian or Viking mythology, I believe they're close enough to the same, Ragnarok, from my understanding, means the final battle. So uh, this their, their whole idea of this is um, you're going out to battle. And then um, at, the end of the, at the end of the battle, you go to Valhalla, which is like, means everything's okay it means you made it you can you can celebrate but back to ragnarok we have hole five par three 295 feet 90 meters i really like this hole um if you look right before the basket there's kind of like this uh rocky area and right there is actually out of bounds so if you don't get the height on it and find yourself there you actually go to a drop zone so uh, off the tee, you have to navigate this gap, this initial gap, but also make sure you have enough height. Yeah, there, it, there's certainly something to be said about the speed control, that you want to make sure you make the clearing, but not go too far past the basket. And uh, you found yourself up on the dance floor, so to speak. Avery says, I can put it even closer, putting himself right there in range. And here's Yaron. And that looks low. We'll see if it gets it's over. Speed. Low. And he just makes it up. And he'll have a putt. He almost hit someone's bag. Just squeaks it past there. I really do like this hole as well. I love how it brings both the elevation and the danger for the water obstacle into play. And uh, right, that's what I was talking about. It was it was a very good shot, but she just doesn't get high enough and bounces back. Finds herself in the water going to the drop zone and this drop zone 
I want to, it's just outside that makeable range. I mean, of course you can make it, but it's a it's definitely you're probably getting a four if you find yourself in the water. Yeah, and she was no more than three inches from clearing that hillside and possibly getting up there with the rest of you. But uh, Euron's going to make good. He takes the birdie. And we're going to find you out next. Again, you see on the top of the basket the, the dual numbers as for which layout that's getting played. And it looks like you had a pretty confident stroke there. Maybe a little bit of confidence from the last few putts that puts you now at three under? Yeah, at, at this point, I've I've made all the putts I've needed to, and I'm just telling myself in my head that uh, today's going to be a good putting day and just letting it happen. And Avery with the tap in. Now we're going to use that structure right there that uh, we saw everyone just throwing at a moment ago, and we're going to tee from there. I love this shot, Eagle. Mm -hmm. I mean... To, to look out over all these trees to see the fjord is is just incredible and to play from this structure is also very cool but it's a it's hole six par three 308 feet 94 feet triple mando so right now there's no rain so you're kind of thinking maybe I maybe I can get away with being a little aggressive so I'm actually trying to get through the mando but Luckily, uh, the PCS construction uh, banner right there kind of saved me from uh, taking a, a stroke. Yeah, so you have to navigate through that upright. Anything past it, left, right, or above it oh, is considered yeah. OB, and that's exactly what Avery's done. He's going to go back to the Mando, which is just at the opening of that upright, and he'll be throwing from there with penalty. This hole is just close enough to where you always want to be aggressive, but a lot of the time you're not going to make it. So the smart play probably is to do what Joran did and just lay up. Uh, yeah, he, you're not losing many strokes if you just get a three here. Luke, oh, that was looking good, but all of a sudden just decided to turn. They made sure of that. Missed Mando by Avery and Luke. They'll be going to the drop zone. Yeah, and that's, as you can see, that's almost exactly where Huron is. He's just at the opening. He didn't have any penalties or, or miss Mandos, but he's in the exact same layup position, so to speak. And uh, he's just going to play this one for a three. Avery is going to take his medicine. There's a pro move. He's not trying to make up for the mistake he made, and he's going to put it right next to the basket and just walk away with the bogey. It's a smart play, especially when it's a little bit cold out, a little wet. Uh, you don't really know how the disc is releasing from long distances. So just taking a four and moving on is is a great play. Right here, I'm having thoughts of running it, but um, <laughs> end up just laying up. I was actually trying to give it a, a floaty run, not to go too far past it, because you never know. Every once in a while, something, something soft could find itself uh, dropping in. Oh, but... wow, burned it. You yep. just don't want to. So you don't want to take unnecessary strokes. No, and we're gonna wait for everyone to tap in, and then there's a hidden treasure. They call those Easter eggs or something. I think we're gonna be uh, Avery's found something on this next tee, uh, and we're gonna see this in a few moments as you guys are cleaning out. Also, the PCS construction sign getting a little rub on the disc you were talking about as you came burning in there. Oh yeah, from hole six. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, how are they gonna? How are you gonna attack hole seven here? Hole seven. It's um, it's the first par four that uh, we've seen so far. Six hundred seventy-two feet, two hundred five meters. Uh, it it favors a righty backhand off the tee, just getting a hyzer down there, and then from there, there's a few different ways. Hey, you Eagle, play need it. a beer? Yeah. I know we're only one third through the round, but in Norway, they like to take care of the people. Good hospitality. Got beers in the ground. They're always cold, you know that. Cheers. <laughs> I know before the uh, internet trolls get wild, you of course didn't partake, but uh, one of the right <laughs> the fun little gems found out on the course. And now after a few minutes of waiting, look what the weather's done to us in just the mm -hmm. last few minutes. This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the the hole before, you would think, okay, it's it's that's a little stormy, but 
all of a sudden it just looks like a hurricane out there. <laughs> that that's pretty much what this round was. Wet and the the wind and the rain on this hole made it very difficult. I threw my most overstable disc, the Metal Flake Max, on a hyzer, and it was barely able to uh, fight through it all. But Avery here is throwing a C line PD2. He may not have gotten as much distance as he wanted, but he'll still be in a decent spot considering the conditions. Yeah, there's OB on the far left and then also OB on the far right. And you're really just playing for position. And as Luca came through on her pull through there, it looked like she just kind of lifted her arm and, and unfortunately found that tree right off the tee. And she's got some real work to do here. Yeah, luckily she stayed in bounds and she has a lot of open air space looking down the fairway. And for where she was, that's a that's a great shot to, to throw. Solid recovery and now here you're just looking again for a position trying to get to the opening and uh, <laughs> the wind even took my umbrella there as a gust came through that's still not good over there it's it's really difficult if you land where uh, around where Yoran did uh, he pulled it too far right and the further you get down the fairway you're gonna want to be left in order to open up um, a gap to get to the basket so your best option right here is probably just to lay up to where um, Avery did to, to get that opening. And if he can get all the way out, almost, it looks like he should have a, a, a line on the gap there to be able to get through. And Luca. Also, pretty good position there. That actually will give her a long look at a pot. So I'm just laying up to the landing zone. Ideally, off the tee, I'd like to be a little bit more left uh, to either get the sidearm or actually a little bit uh, further back from the trees so I could throw a grenade over the top. Yeah, and at a certain point, you just kind of have to adjust your game plan with how much wind and rain was just ripping through just a few minutes ago. And here we are down the fairway a few minutes later, and it looks like an entirely different day. <laughs> it, it's mind blowing just how inconsistent the weather is, but <laughs> at least we are getting breaks. That is the nice thing. Yeah. And I guess that would be a question for you as uh, we're watching the approaches. Would you rather have the intermittent and kind of deal with those changing conditions? Or would you just rather have We'll say a steady, consistent rain throughout. Do you have a preference? I like the intermittent because <laughs> okay. after a while, you you just get soaked. You don't have towels, so any breaks you can get, it's great. I think. Okay, and we see off in the background uh, one of the nice amenities that they've put out there. It's so warm and welcoming to everyone, really. But uh, Avery has kind of helped uh, promote and champion this event for a number of years. Of course, winning it and always finishing well. They've got a big welcome sign for Avery Jenkins in the background, which we're going to see in a moment. Really nice touch. Oh, man. And this putt right here means <laughs> a lot. We see you and Yaron kind of just sitting there watching. They're just, I think you guys were even maybe mentioning something about the banner. I tried to frame it up, and 2009 world champ makes it happen. Yeah, I was talking to Avery after that. I was like, you had, you had no choice but to make that putt with that in the background. And Avery delivers just like he did in that pressure-packed moment in 2009. What were you, like six years old then? Uh, about that. <laughs> I'm feeling the pressure from the banner as well. <laughs> but I don't capitalize on it. So Maybe. kind of surprising. That's that's going to be your first real mistake here of the of the round so far. Yeah, I I feel like I was pretty happy um, on how I played this hole, considering the really tough conditions. Um, but the real issue was on my third shot, uh, the laying up. I put myself a little too far past the basket for how easy of an approach shot it was. So. Uh, of course, the putt wasn't ideal, but I shouldn't have been that far away in the in the first place. 
Well, we're going to follow it up with another par four. How do you attack this one? Hole eight, uh, as you said, par four, 426 feet, uh, 130 meters. It's really short for a par four, and it's actually very difficult. Oh, we're getting a little <laughs> selfie right here as per Avery's request. Uh, but you got to take advantage of it. Um, it plays it plays like a par four if you take it up the middle because it's almost impossible to get there on the line Avery's throwing a sidearm just because you'd have to swing it so far so far right um but there is a way to kind of cheat it all and uh there's a big hyzer which if you look at the distance 426 feet is a rip but not not when you're able to full, put full power on a 12 speed disc i take well, <laughs> I you take go the, the route that i wasn't expecting yeah i didn't even know that route existed and we didn't quite have the full catch but you're literally just a few feet away i mean what an incredible shot yeah that avery was telling me that um kind of the big arm guys go that way shout out to hulk and Kvesset, um casper scovely and i'm sure i'm missing a few other ones but uh oh peter lunde all the all the big arm norwegians go that way if they want to if they want to score so was that something you practiced or was that something that when you got there with avery he kind of let you know at that time i kind of scoped it out the day before it was actually the weather wasn't so ideal so only got a quick practice round so i maybe didn't see everything i really wanted to see uh before the event um and I knew it was there, but Avery kind of took talked me into going that way. <laughs> we had a good win, so figured why not. And we see the two of you so close in score, really just a stroke off of one another at this point. Uh, you know, you had taken the bogey on the previous hole, and then finally as we just pan over, we see your blue one parked right next to the pin. And Avery's got to look at Eagle from 70 feet maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he gets down the fairway and, like, like I was saying, um, you can't really get there with a sidearm. Just has a lot of swing. So, I mean, Avery set himself up for an easy birdie, which is uh, he's climbing the he's climbing um, climbing up the ranks with the score. <laughs> and a little bounce by Iran. Not quite <laughs> enough body English to get it to drop. <laughs> Certainly an animated player out there and. Again, what him and, and Seifert and, and all of the guys have put together on this property, it's really a collection of three or four guys along with some family property and some great friendships that have developed this Oveross course. And it's an experience almost like none other. I mean, just to, to show up on this private property and to come and have the weekend that you can, that is 50% hardcore golf and 50% hardcore party, it's it's just truly incredible yeah the hospitality is fantastic the the day before the event started um one of the main guys uh brage took me and my dad out on um kind of a little tour with uh his kind of uh like atv uh style like Pol polaris rig and just talking to him he's just saying you know, I, my main goal this weekend is just to, to give everyone a good time. And that really the whole PCS crew is just striving for that. So um, it, it just really, it's really great being out there, just knowing that that's their goal. And they really do a good job at making that happen. They do. And we're going to take a look at hole nine as we close out the front nine. What's the plan? Yep. Final hole of the front nine. Uh, it's par three, 354 feet. 108 meters kind of plays like an island um it's a very large island but um uh the initial the initial field that you kind of throw over if you don't get past where um kind of the trees start that's considered out of bounds uh, but this um this hides a little bit left of the basket going to be just outside the circle yeah, you're seeing the white stakes out there, and so that's really the mark you need to hit to at least get over those uh, to find the inbounds territory. And Avery, a little bit of an adjustment from yours, not quite as long, but he seems to be pretty much center with the basket. Avery shot looked great. I was surprised that it was um, as short as it was. 
I feel like this plays a full 354. It's even slightly downhill, and I, I'm not going to tell them to get their uh, range finders out or anything, but 354, it plays all of that, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I remember kind of really being confused on this in practice <laughs> just because uh, I was in between a mid-range and a driver just because it said it did say uh, 354. Oh, Luke kind of pulls it a little too early, and she is not going to make the island, pushing her to the drop zone. And from there, she has at least 150, maybe 175 feet to the pin. Comes up just a bit short. She'll have a putt, but I think probably just outside the circle. And this is one where I, I feel like you really need the game plan of stepping up, getting onto the island. If if you somehow get up there, you get the two, that's a bonus. But if you walk away with a three here, you're probably not losing strokes to the field. Yeah, exactly. Um it's it's fairly easy to get on the island, but of course, if you take it for granted, maybe try something a little aggressive. You could push it long or pull it right, pull it left, hit a tree, and quickly you could be looking at a an unnecessary bogey stroke. You're about pin high, at least 35, maybe 40 feet. Mm. I was content with that run. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I said, I feel like that kind of plays as a as a bonus here. And Luca is just inside the circle by about a meter, and she's not able to convert. So we're gonna watch these uh, this entire group kind of clean things up. I want to. We're gonna give a ton of shout outs throughout, but like you just mentioned, Brage and Seifert and Yaron and the entire crew, just such a tremendous job. We've got a ton more golf for you yet. We've got the back nine of this round. We've got all of round number three plus the finals and looking forward to bring it to everyone out there. The PCS Open, incredible event here in Norway. And uh, we're going to see a few tap-ins. Eagle, it looks like as we're heading into the back nine, we've got Luca at plus 10. Avery's going to be tapping in at negative two. You're going to tap in for your negative four and you're on at plus three. So pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys on the back. Yeah, I look forward to it.